So here we are in part three. Let's do, um, I'm just going to show you the state of my computer, Docker PSA. I have no Dockers running. Um, I'll do a Docker images, and you can see that uh, I've just got those two images from the last two videos. So I'll go ahead and I'll do a, a Docker um, run. And let's go ahead and run, love the up arrow, hyphen T, hyphen D, name my Ubuntu. I'll just run Ubuntu back. So once we've run that image, let's do an IPA DDR. Now I'm on Amazon Web Services. You could be anywhere on here, but we're looking for an interface called Docker Zero here. And we have this interface that's at 172.17.0.1 slash 16. So that interface is kind of like a private network that only this host operating system can communicate with. If I were to try to ping 172.17.0.1, from a computer somewhere else, that computer would have no idea how to reach it. So this Docker machine is completely firewalled, except from this local machine. If I were to try to ping, for example, 172.17.0.1 from this local machine, you can see, yes, it indeed can reach that Docker image, which has the local IP address. So. We're going to go ahead and bind a port on the Docker image to a port on the host operating system. So again, this Docker is our guest operating system. We're going to bind a port there to a port on our host operating system so that this Docker can be reached um, by the outside world. We're going to do that with a web server. So let's go ahead and uh, do a docker kill my Ubuntu and a docker rm my Ubuntu. So we have nothing running. We did a docker kill. We did a docker rm. So we're going to map that port like this. Let's do a docker run hyphen hyphen name, and I'll call this one my web hyphen dit. We're going to create Web's, uh, excuse me, a Docker that runs and sits there and keeps running in the background. We're going to pass it the hyphen P command, which is for port. And in this case, let's just give it a crazy two different ports. A lot of times you'll want it to look like this 80 colon 80, which would map port 80 on the internal machine to port 80 in the Docker. But let's give it two different port numbers just to demonstrate how this sort of plays out. So we have port 8080, which will be mapped to port 80. And we're going to do this with our Ubuntu image. So I'll do a docker ps hyphen a. And when we look at uh, docker ps hyphen a, we can see that on our host operating system, on all interfaces, there's zero, 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 zero that we are listening on port 8080. And anything it hears on port 8080, it's going to forward in to port 80 on that Docker. So let's go ahead and uh, do our Docker exec and then Docker exec into this. And I'll be taking a grade at the end of this one if you're in my class. So we'll do docker exec IT. And in this case, it's not my Ubuntu. In this case, I'm calling it my web bin bash. I'll do my apt update. And in this case, I'm going to do an apt install Apache 2. And my Apache server has now um, been installed. So I'm going to cd to var www. You can see we have a folder called HTML with index.html. I'm going to rm index.html in var www.html. I'm going to pico bec.html. And pico's not installed. Of course, pico's not installed. 
because uh, I used the old one. So I'm going to do a quick apt install nano. We're going to fix that. I'm going to pico beck.html. I'm going to write hello world. So here I am in var www.html. We have a file called beck.html. Put your last name, put whatever you want, pause the video, get to that point. Now, my next move, because I'm on Amazon Web Services, is going to be to open up port 8080 on my local machine. If you're not on Amazon Web Services, you won't need to take this next step. So here I am for the Amazon Web Services machine that's running this, and I'm just going to edit my inbound rules. And I'm going to go ahead and I am going to just allow this temporary machine. I'm just going to allow all TCP connections through on 00. zero. And I'll go ahead and I'll do the same thing for UDP just in case I want to do something. So we're going to expose this entire Amazon Web Services machine to the Internet. I have now disabled the firewall on my AWS instance. And so the idea here is, depending on where you are, is identify what your IP address is that you can reach. In this case, it's 54.198.189.60 happens to be mine. And if I go to that, um, I would need to also put colon 8080, because that's the port that we mapped on the external machine, right? So... The first time I tried this, it didn't work. I had to uh, go into the Docker itself, and I had to run service Apache to start. Or better yet, um, system CTL enable Apache 2, I think, is going to work. Um, hold on. And uh, system D is not installed on this, and I like to use system CTL. Uh, so let's do an apt install system D just to bring in our uh, system CTL commands. Pause the video, let that install. And I think that proves the point that uh, these Docker images are sort of really skinned down at first. System CTL enable Apache 2. And now um, Apache 2 will be started on startup. Really all we needed to do was um, system CTL or service, whatever you like, start Apache 2. And uh, they have different syntaxes, see, because uh, this confuses me. This is just an aside. Service takes the program name second, but system CTL takes the program name third, right? Um, so in any event, you could have used system CTL. You could have used service just to start Apache. In this case, I chose to install systemd and enable it as a service, which is good because we'll continue to work with it. So hack all that out, and when we head back, you can see that you have your um, Apache running here on port 8080. So I'm going to ask, if you're not in my class, you can move on to the next video. If you are in my class, grab that snipping tool, or if you are actually in class, you can raise your hand, and I'll come take a look at it. If you want to be able to demonstrate if I'm not available, or if the instructor is not available. Um, just go ahead and snap this right here so we can see that uh, you have an Apache server that is running indeed on port 8080.